the first conference was in 89 or 90 in St. Louis. I was there for that first one and I've been to just about everyone since. But it's the annual conference of the whole language umbrella. Um, so we're a conference of NCTE. Um, we exist under that larger umbrella. And then underneath the whole language umbrella, there are um, now five smaller tall groups, teachers applying whole language. There's one in Tucson, Mid-Missouri, um, a new group in central Illinois, Louisville, and there's one out on North Fork on Long Island. Um, and we've recently heard from some speech and language therapists in Lafayette, Louisiana, who are interested in investigating whole language, and they're actually sending someone to the conference for the first time. So that's pretty exciting. So this is a, a literacy conference that's dedicated to progressive literacy practices. Um, and also democratic education and social justice. So those kinds of themes run throughout the conference in, in, our, um, in our breakout sessions, in symposium, and through our keynote speakers. And there's also a wonderful pre-conference session that you will be at, along with Kathy Fleischer from Eastern Michigan University. And um, the focus of the pre-conference is looking at at taking social action. So I'm really excited about this year's, which is called Everyday Advocacy, um, and looking at how we can advocate at a local level and be what Kathy is describing as I think it's smart, safe, and savvy. Right? Teachers will find a lot of ways of looking at literacy within the context of other areas of the curriculum also. Mm. And I think that um, in this year's conference, it was really interesting. We received a lot of proposals um, that connected literacy to like science and social studies, even the arts and technology. And so running throughout the concurrent sessions, um, there are breakout sessions with presenters talking about those topics in just about every time slot. Um, there's even a two and a quarter hour symposium looking at um, how scientists use literacy, which I'm really excited to go to because I love to teach science. So, you know, when teachers are feeling so pressured, like, how can I get it all in? Because um, we're always asked to do more and more and more. Integrating curriculum is about the only way to do that. And whole language teachers are really good at integrating curriculum and using literacy for real purposes. Um, within meaningful contexts for students. So I think there's something to offer to people who've never heard of whole language before and want to come and find out what, what that's all about. It's really broad for this conference. Okay. So the Early Childhood Assembly, mm -hmm. um, they sponsor sessions too. So we have preschool people coming, um, kindergarten, all the way through the grades up into high school. Um, we have a couple of, we have some really strong middle school, high school sessions this year, um, including Don Goebel, who's from the St. Louis area, and he's won awards for his work with video with students. Um, we have college professors. We get undergraduates and graduate students coming to share. You know, this is a friendly place for them to begin to share their research. So the audience is very, very broad. We've even had parents come to the conference before because they want to learn more about this kind of education. Opening keynote speaker is Natalie Perkins, a wonderful <sighs> author. She writes children's novels, um, probably geared more for middle school and on up. Um, she was born in India and has lived all over the world. So her multicultural background is reflected in her books. Well, it turns out in the St. Louis area, Catherine Mitchell Pierce, who's our local conference chair, um, has been working with teachers at the middle school level who've been, the, the students have been reading Mitali's books. And so we thought we needed to create a way for them and other people in the community to come um, to the conference to hear Mitali, but also to become familiar with Whole Language Umbrella. So um, we're, we're advertising. We don't expect the whole city to show up. I hope not. <laughs> the auditorium's not that big. Um, but there's a local bookstore, an independent local bookstore, that's going to be selling at the conference. So we've been distributing flyers through them and through the networks that Catherine Pierce has in the area. So um, people can come and hear Mitali and stay to buy her books and have them autographed by her. And, um, 
And of course, our conference attendees will be there too. It should be really exciting. We've never done anything like this before, so it's kind of like a, a little rapid fire test and we might have to turn and pivot when we're done, but, but we'll see what happens. It, it sounds cool. Conference session is, it's something I always go to. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, um, I taught at the university for about three years teaching undergraduates and always tried to help them understand that that every teaching decision they made was a political decision and that there were going to be times when they would have to advocate for themselves and their students and their families. So I, I think this year's um, symposium will give people some ways to do that. Mm -hmm. um, as a teacher myself, I've stepped out and put myself in those risky positions sometimes, sometimes with colleagues and sometimes alone. Um, but I've done it often enough to be known as the wide-eyed radical in my district. So um, I, I've still survived. This has just finished my 40th year of teaching. So there, there must be ways to do it that, that keep you smart, safe, and savvy. Um, I also look forward to the symposia sessions. Those are on Saturday morning. They're two and a quarter hour sessions, and there's only three offered at one time. So we're asking people to make a commitment to spend an extended period of time um, diving deeper into a particular topic. And this year's symposium, there's one on race and social justice that, that um, Alex Cuenca is involved in. He's also one of our keynote speakers. There's the one about science and literacy that I mentioned before. And then there's um, the Early Childhood Education Assembly has sponsored another one on curiosity and young children, which sounds really intriguing. And then, you know, there are some social kinds of things too. There's a reception on Friday evening with music and hors d'oeuvres and a chance to chat with people. Um, there's a luncheon on Friday. Alex Cuenca is our luncheon speaker, but people can come and share a meal with us. Um, that requires a separate registration, as does the pre-conference, um, but people can come without those things, too. It's, it's something extra that you can do at the conference. So, so this is a very casual conference, so mm. it's, you know, it's fine to come in blue jeans, although those might be too hot for St. Louis. And <laughs> Well, we've known for a while that it's really hard for teachers to get district support to attend conferences. And even though ours isn't the most expensive conference, I've been to ones that cost a lot more, um, it still can be hard for a teacher, especially if they're coming from outside the state where they need to fly and not drive. Mm -hmm. So we're trying out um, a $45 special discount for people in K-12 education. So when they go on the website to register, um, they'll see a special button. I think it's towards the bottom inside of the page where they can click and indicate their status and That $45 will come off their registration for the conference So we'll do some follow-up afterwards to see if that's been effective how many people took advantage of it um, And if it's worthwhile for us to continue doing I attended that first full language umbrella conference um, I'd been connected with the whole language community here in Tucson for a long time because our local tall group has been going since the late 1970s. But um, I went to that first conference and I remember sitting down next to someone and looking over at that person and going, oh my gosh, his picture's on the back of the book I just read. Yeah. <laughs> and actually having a conversation with that person and getting up 10 minutes later feeling like we've known each other forever. Wow. Uh, so in the one sense, this, is, this conference is like a reunion for people who've been coming um, often. Um, Whole Language Umbrella also has a strand at the annual NCTE convention. So twice a year, there's this group of dedicated conference goers who see each other and have formed a community. But because we're a small conference in the summer, about 250 people, it's really easy to bring newcomers into that community. Mm -hmm. So it's a very friendly and intimate um, kind of conference. It's easy to sit down and talk to people you don't know. And then you're going to see the same people over and over again in sessions throughout those days. 
Um, so holding on to that inspiration um, and that rejuvenation kind of feeling um, can be a challenge for teachers who, who aren't lucky like we are in mid-Missouri or Tucson where we have a, a community of dedicated practitioners. Mm -hmm. But the whole language umbrella offers um, a Facebook page and there's a connected community on the NCTE website. So there's, there are groups that stay connected. There's like a, a tall group that's virtual. It exists only online where people can connect with each other and share their thinking and ideas. So um, hopefully people would do that. And of course, we would love for them to join the whole language umbrella, mm -hmm. um, which they have to join NCTE first. And then by subscribing to Talking Points, which is the, NC, the whole language umbrella journal, they also become members of whole language umbrella. And um, something else about the registration is when you register as a non-member, you are swept in for a year of membership and the journal. So everybody who comes to the conference is going to be a whole language umbrella member, at least for that one year, and then we hope they'll renew. We're not in downtown St. Louis this time. We're in Clayton, which is a neighboring town. Um, it's a very short ride on public transportation into the city and the museums and the ballpark and the river and everything else that's going on there. But Catherine Mitchell Pierce, our local conference chair, lives in Clayton and said there are like dozens of restaurants and shopping and uh, lots of things for families to do very close to the hotel within walking distance of the hotel. And then public transportation can take them into, into town to the parks, to the Arch and the Arch Museum. I visited that the last time I was there. It's fabulous. Um, if you want to catch a ball game, you know, the stadium is right downtown. So um, all kinds of things to do. It's fun. It will be hot and sticky, though, I'm pretty sure. That's all right.